just floating or are we going? We're going. <laughs> okay, the other thing is, of course, your plant also needs an unbroken column of water, which is, I mean, theoretically, what I should be doing here is putting the vase under the water like you would do with your cut flowers to uh, stop them dying. Um, and doing it that way. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that because I've broken the tension in the column, cohesion tension theory, yay, um, that actually it's, it's kind of pinged up, that the air will have pinged up to about here and I'm going to cut it about there. So I've got some little titchy scissors but I might need to borrow Dr Savile's really big scissors. Oh no, oh, oh, look at me, how strong am I? So you want to try and, while you're doing this bit, keep the leaves as dry as possible because obviously if they're wet, they're building up a layer of humidity, so you might need to dry them afterwards. And you're going to insert the plant stem into the top of your equipment. So that you've got one continuous unbroken column of water. I'm just going to get a bit of Vaseline because I like it. And as soon as I take it out, I'm just going to Vaseline around the stem um, just to make sure that it doesn't evaporate water just from that bit that's open. So there we have our sort of our setup. I don't know that I can lean over far enough. Can we float the camera a bit further on the bench? Mm -hmm. Oh, look at this. Do, 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 do the intermission music. <laughs> so, when we get to uh, sort of recording movement, we can use this reservoir to pull, oh, not to pull it out. I'm so rough today. To pull an air bubble onto the scale. I can't even see where there's an air bubble though because I've got yeah. Vaseline all over my fingers. We can then time how long that air bubble takes to move down the scale so that we've got a time and a distance so we'll be able to get a rate. So that's the sort of minimum data we need. Um, so our dependent variable is the distance that the bubble has moved along the scale in a time interval. Um, Ivy goes like fun apparently, so you know a minute or two minutes would be fine. Generally, you might be talking five or ten minutes. Now, as regards the dependent variable, it's not going to stay, is it? Oh, look at that balancing. As regards the dependent variable, we could do two different things. So I'm not going to plug any of this electrical equipment in because my hands are wet, and I don't want to do it to electrocute myself. However. You know that one of the things that influences stomatal opening is light intensity, so we can put a lamp close by the plant, we can move it further away and give it less and less and less light, a bit like in the photosynthesis experiments. One of the other things that influences uh, transpiration is the air movement. So the more air movement there is across the surface of the leaf, it takes away that sort of layer of uh, evaporated water vapour and, and maintains a diffusion gradient. So we could use a hairdryer to get different speeds of wind. Um, we do have a problem there with heat, because you can't have a hairdryer that doesn't give out heat, I don't think. I don't know. What do I know about hairdryers? I don't use one. I used to melt bits of Xbox in my house. Um, so, dependent, independent variable would be whatever you would be choosing to do. So you could do different plants, providing they've got the same area. Um, control variables. <coughs> Obviously, if you're doing light intensity, you need to control the wind speed. You need to control the humidity. You might want to look at leaf area. This is one of the things they tell you to do in your booklet, is to get your leaves draw around them on a piece of graph paper and make a really good estimate of the leaf area. So you could do you know, plants with not very many leaves versus plants with lots of them. You could do different leaf areas because they're different species. You could do stomatal density and do the nail polish thing and 
do the stomatal density of your different plants. So obviously if you're controlling the variable you would need to use the same plant with the same leaf area and the same stomatal density. So you'd use the same plant for each repeat. When you've got your results, quite often what you are required to do is to, because it covers some of the mathematical skills uh, that you need to address, is to calculate the volume of water. So to do that you need the diameter of your capillary tube. You then need to apply pi r squared, remembering that a radius is half of a diameter and then multiply it by the height of your cylinder. So that's the thing that uh, certainly last year's uh, students found most difficult, was going, well, where do you get the height of the cylinder? The cylinder is the tube. So the height is the distance that that bubble has moved, and then you can calculate a volume of water taken up in a time interval and reduce it to a volume per minute. That will be quite tiny. Obviously, we need to uh, improve reliability, we need to do repeats, we need to do five different independent variables, we need to repeat each experiment three times, calculate a mean average from those results. Uh, you could potentially be calculating standard deviations if you've got enough um, data and perhaps doing a t-test to compare the difference of the means. There are all things you can do.